Okay, welcome back. We just started talking about the using a function um, to fill in something. This is actually pretty cool, but that way you, the human, don't ever have to record you know, what's the order date and things like that. It'll automatically just fill it in for you. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, so I'm going to go and th throw in a couple more things in here. I'm going to throw in age, and it's going to be an integer, and I'm going to make it not default. I mean, not null for some reason. Okay. I need to put a comma there. Okay, cool. So now we're going to do some some data constraints. They're called, co well, yeah, on page 341. So this constraint was for creating primary keys and foreign keys. Now we're going to do one for data. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, constraint. It needs to be a hat. It needs to have a, a name. So I'm going to call this one like, I don't know age and i'm gonna say ck that's just my thing and this is a, a check constraint okay now what happens here is just as if this was like a where clause okay so for example i could basically say um in in parentheses i would say age is less than or sorry greater than i don't know zero and age less than 140 like that okay so i've created a constraint now there are some versions of uh, databases that will allow you to do a check constraint on the same line don't do that i like the honest to god explicit constraint command okay so if i like it that's what i'm expecting let's do the one for for uh state for example i'm gonna do state ck check and you know how you can go in here and use practically anything from a where clause right so i can say um i'm gonna put square brackets in there so i don't go crazy state in remember the in command um so i only accept texas and louisiana and oklahoma and that's it Okay, so these are examples of check constraints. So this is a domain constraint. All it is is using the in keyword. It's nothing fancy here. So a domain constraint, okay? This is a range constraint, okay, right? I could have said age between, you know, that would have worked. All right, is that kind of sort of making sense, guys? Okay, let's continue. Um, all, all of these explicit constraints require a, a name because I might want to talk to it later, okay? And so the constraint looks just like a where clause without the where keyword. And yes, the parentheses are required. And I will tell you that something kind of weird is MySQL doesn't support the check constraint, which is kind of weird. I would have thought it would. So it's a very handy tool. Remember, the whole point of all this stuff is to prevent you from putting garbage in the database. Remember, that's the whole point of all this. You're trying to build something so that you can't go wrong. You can't do. You can't put a minus four in the age. You know, you can't put 400 as an age. You can't have a state that's not not where we aren't licensed to do business. So, this is what it's all about. It's about creating these rules that you apply to the database so people can't put crap in the database good okay all right so they basically kind of have a kind of sort of have a, a summary here um here's an example where they put the check constraint and they said nationality in okay so this is a range constraint um here's a weird one that i thought was pretty cool i never thought about this where the date of birth has to be less than the date of deceased yeah that makes sense you can't have them backwards the valid year of birth so the, this they show a numeric and so they're saying okay uh you can't have a date a, a year of birth that starts with a three or a zero it's gonna have to be a one or a two kind of makes sense so that's really super duper stuff right and then down here you know pretty straightforward okay so let's just do a, a summary stop for just a minute and talk about constraint summaries so the column constraints would be null and not null, okay? The explicit ones would be a primary key constraint, 
a foreign key constraint, a unique constraint, and then a check constraint, okay? Things that are not on the list are identity and default because that's kind of sort of not really constraints. Yeah, it falls into the same discussion as a constraint, but you can't literally say that a default is a constraint. I mean, just from the English language, that doesn't make any sense, but okay, but they are. So null and not null, primary, foreign, unique, check, and then the two oddball things, which is identity and, and default. Okay, so I'm gonna skip a bit. We're gonna go to page 346 where we start altering a table. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my guy. I, I, I'm not gonna execute this uh, because it's just junk. So here's, I do have a student table, okay? And what I wanna do is after it's built, let's make sure it is built because I can't remember if I did it or not. Yay, there it is, okay. So I wanna alter this table to add another column. Well, I mean, I guess I could go in here and whack this thing, but what if it had data in it? I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna learn a yet another command. So right now we've got, we. hey, let's keep count. The select command, create command. Woohoo, we got two of them. All right, we're getting ready to learn a third one, okay? And it's gonna be the alter command. So alter will allow me to go in here and say, alter table student, okay? And this one's kind of weird because for some reason I don't need a parentheses. I don't ever get this. I'm gonna do it on two lines again, just because. And I'm gonna say, add, I don't know, zodiac sign or some goofy thing like that. And let's make it uh, an inchar 10 or something. I don't know how many letters there are in there. And I'm gonna make it null, okay? So what this basically means is I'm gonna go to the student table, I'm gonna add one. By the way, it always adds to the bottom. You don't get the choice to like insert it into the third spot or the fourth spot. It always goes to the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna run this to make sure it works. And ta-da, okay. So if I go here to my student guy and I say, you know, select, I don't have any data, but this will at least show me the thing. So Zodiac sign showed up at the bottom, okay? Which means it's at the end, which is exactly what I had in mind, okay? Cool. All right, that kind of sort of makes sense. Good. So I can alter, uh, by the way, when you're using the alter thing, um, this is the one of the few places where you don't tell it what you're adding. You would think every other time we do an alter, if we want to drop something, we have to tell it, oh, I'm dropping a column. But when you're adding, you don't have to tell it the column, the word keyword column here. I, I don't get that. I don't know why that's the case, but just it just is. So the add defaults to a column. Okay. None of the other add things, I mean, alter commands do that. So I could go in here and do a, a drop. Hey, I guess I'm going to go ahead and build this guy. I don't think I made any errors in there, did I? Good. All right. So I'm going to go in here and whack some stuff. Okay. So I'm going to do alter table temp. Okay. And so what do you think I'm going to do? Let's just drop one of those constraints. So I have to tell it that I'm dropping a constraint. And I'm going to drop the, the state CK. What do you think? Let's try it. But -da. now do you understand why every one of these explicit constraints needs a, a name? If you had done it the other way, for example, I mentioned that there is a technique where you could actually put this on the same line as this guy. But if you did that, you won't be able to talk to it. Okay, so don't do that. Always use the explicit one. So I can drop a constraint. Maybe I can even go and add a constraint. Okay, let's try that. So, alter table to add constraint. In fact, I'm gonna add that and put that guy back. Um, call it state two CK, and it's it's gonna be um, a check constraint, and I'm just gonna say age is less than 140. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Oh, add constraint. Oh, it helps if you spell it right. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, it works much better when you spell it right.
Okay, so next we're going to do an alter column thing. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say alter table student. And I discovered that the zodiac sign is, doesn't have the right data type. So I'm going to go here and say alter column. The column keyword is required. The name of the column. And I'm going to change this to in bar char, I don't know, 15. And I could change null to not null, but I'm going to leave that alone. That's how you change the other parts. Now, you can't change the name, um, kind of, uh, because you have to call it by its name. I mean, you can create a new new column and then get rid of the old one, but there's no rename. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. And so, ta-da, I've changed the data type. Okay, kind of makes sense. Okay. So I think we pretty much all got all of the alter stuff. So right now we've learned the select command, we've learned the create command, and now we learned the alter command. And alter will allow me to add columns, and add a constraint, delete a constraint, change column properties, all sorts of things like that. The next thing we're gonna learn is the drop and truncate commands. So I'm gonna go here <coughs> and say, I wanna drop table major, okay? So what did we say when we, when we built the referential integrity? What did we tell the machine for the onDelete function? Because this essentially is going to do an onDelete. It's going to come up and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that because it's got a referential integrity. Now, this is not an error. This is a rule. You built a rule to protect you from doing something stupid. So don't look at this and go, oh, man, uh, something went wrong. No, everything worked exactly as designed. You put that control in place to prevent you from doing something stupid. So drop makes the entire table go away. Just this table over here and just vanishes everything. Now let's talk about truncate. Truncate is very, very similar to that. Truncate table major, um, except it's gonna leave all the stuff intact. For example, it's still gonna have the, the columns, it's still gonna have the primary keys and the identity and the you know, all the foreign keys and all the rest of that defaults, everything. In other words, the structure is going to remain the same. It's like a super duper delete where like you just delete all the rows. Okay. So, hey, if I ask you in a test question, what's the difference between drop, uh, drop and truncate? You'd be able to tell me, wouldn't you? Hey, is this going to work? Can I, because remember truncate just makes the table, all the rows go away. I don't actually have any rows, but the machine doesn't know that. He goes, no, man, can't do it. You can't do a truncate because of referential integrity. And once again, this is not an error. This is you protecting yourself. Okay, man, we've learned two more commands. We've learned the drop command, the truncate command. Woohoo! All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is indexes. Now, we're not actually going to create an index, okay? Uh, I'm just telling you, we're going to wait till like chapter 10 to do that. But we're going to talk about them. And that's kind of important. All right, so. Indexes are designed to make the database run faster. It's, it pre-sorts. Let's say you had an Excel spreadsheet. And sometimes you need column two sorted. And sometimes you need column four sorted. Uh, so, you know, an Excel spreadsheet, you can't really, I mean, you, you would basically have to have like two sheet, two tabs. One of them sorted on column two, another one sorted on column four, because you can't sort them both at the same time, right? I mean. All, you know, column two is the only column you want it sorted. And then later on, column four is the only column you want it sorted. Okay, so that's what indexes are. Indexes do a sort behind the scenes. And you can have lots of them. I can have a sort on column two, a sort on column four. And it, it's designed so that whenever it speeds up a where clause, whenever you have a where clause, the machine has to go through, let's say it was not sorted and you're hunting for, you know, uh, a name, you're hunting for Fred, and it would go through and go, well, start at the beginning. The, the, it would have no choice but to look through every single one hunting for Fred because it's got no other way of doing it. If it was sorted, it would say, ah, oh, well, once I get to the Fs and there's no Fred, there's no need for me to go any further. So you see how a, an index could speed things up? Okay. Hey, we're coming up on the 15 minute mark. Let's uh, continue this discussion in just a few.